Mayor James Butts promotes violence, bigotry, and violations of civil rights in city council meetings. He does this by unethically and illegally abusing his power as chairman and allowing his political shills to use loud, abusive, bigoted, and even illegally threatening language designed to intimidate his critics. And in doing so, Butts emboldens his shills to limit people's civil rights with acts which are more and more violent and bigoted. Up until late 2015, this woman, Ethel Austin, was James Butt's biggest supporter. So what is going on with this world? And you could laugh all you want, because you, when you're wrong, you don't admit it. You're ignorant. You are old, ignorant fool. That's what you are. And a lot of you all should be barred out of here. See that laughing, how stupid and ignorant he is to be so old? An old damn fool. Miss Austin just violated four areas of the rules of decorum for the meetings. She made loud, personal, abusive, and profane comments. But as long as she's directing those comments towards James Butts' critics, Butts stays quiet. Hey, but at least she didn't make any threatening comments, right? Oh, wait a minute. She wasn't done yet. Yeah, but everybody else get threatened. Boy, that man out before somebody hurt that man. And there it is. And when a mayor demonstrates approval for his supporters being more and more abusive and more and more threatening, his supporters naturally get more and more abusive and more and more threatening. And if you're saying to yourself, hey, if any of the mayor's supporters get too aggressive and it seems like they're really going to hurt someone, you can just go to the police, right? Sorry, but the Inglewood Police Department is notorious for avoiding investigating any crimes, let alone those done by the mayor's shills. And let's be clear, Penal Code 422.6 states that it is a crime for any person to use force or even intimidation to keep any other person from exercising any right given to them by the U.S. Constitution. So when Ethel Austin stands up in a meeting and yells out, that if a certain resident keeps coming to meetings, she or someone else might hurt that resident, that is intimidation meant to keep someone from coming to council meetings, which is a right granted to them by the Constitution. Boy, that man out before somebody hurt that man. Boy, that man out. Boy, that man out. Boy, that man out before somebody hurt. Before somebody hurt. Before somebody hurt that man. And James Butts allowing, no, encouraging Miss Austin and his other shills to be so loud and so threatening against residents week after week, while he isn't acting much better, is how James Butts promotes violence in city council meetings. Oh, and when it comes to Mayor James Butts' biggest supporter, Ethel Austin, you haven't even heard profane yet. This is something that Miss Austin posted on her internet page. And warning, you need to send the kids out of the room. I don't want no rookie mama. Because usually new girls have. And if she fuck my ass, I'm gonna have to fuck her up. And then after I fuck her up, I'm gonna fuck you up. Then after I fuck you up, that bad bitch called uh, Katrina over there, I'm gonna shoot that bitch who's bad. I'm gonna put a Louisiana whipping on her motherfuckers. And that goes on and on for a while. And this is a woman who regularly and hypocritically cited scriptures in Jesus' name to criticize Butts' opponents. You ought to just stop. Go to church. Go to church. Find Jesus. And if she fuck my ass, I'm gonna have to fuck her. Find Jesus in your life. And then after I fuck her, I'm gonna fuck you up. Jesus in your life. Then after I fuck you up, that bad bitch called Katrina over there, I'm gonna shoot that bitch who's bad. I'm going to put a Louisiana whipping on her motherfuckers. Find Jesus in your life. Find Jesus in your life. Find Jesus in your life. Jesus in your life. Find Jesus in your life. And so if you're James Butt's biggest supporter in city council meetings, and you breathe out profanity like it's air, 
and your loud, abusive, and even threatening to other residents that criticize James Butts, what does James Butts and his council do when you move out of the state? Well, if James Butts and the council didn't take that opportunity to criticize Miss Austin's past behavior in meetings, what would they do? Well, but if you're James Butts' most intimidating flunky, he'll honor you in a council meeting, give you a plaque, have the city's official paper put you on the front page, and they name you Inglewood's ambassador. You see, like others who come to council meetings just to defend James Butts and attack his critics, Ethel Austin was an unemployed political opportunist. She used her aggressive attacks to gain favors from politicians, whatever politician she could. In fact, before former Inglewood City Council member Judy Dunlap, who opposed James Butts, lost her bid for re-election, Miss Austin was her attack dog. Austin would not only support Dunlap in council meetings, but she would plainly state her dissatisfaction with James Butts, who she referred to as Satan, and other council members and city officials in the local paper that supported Dunlap, the Morningside Chronicle. You just got the beginning. We were together when you spoke and I walked away from you because you're Satan. You're Satan. In fact, in the last hours of election day in the 2013 runoff election between Judy Dunlap and Alex Padilla, I saw Austin and Dunlap standing all alone outside a polling place as if they were sisters. So it would be understandable that in council meetings, Austin would be fervently attacking Butts and his supporters, like this. These two, I'm going to just tell the people the way it is. If you vote for Padilla, you got a dirty cop coming from Santa Monica. His brother was pervert on the Santa Monica period, swept under that. Also, Mike Stevens. So when Austin uses abusive language against Butts' ally, Alex Padilla, Butts has no problem recessing the meeting, turning the cameras off, and ejecting Austin. And when Austin attacks him... We don't want you to say you hate your cop. Here's the other sauce. Wait, Reggie. You always, you know what? Who about to get you, brother? Mm -hmm. Brother Jesus going to get you. You going to be at that, that one stop, brother, Rape your own dog. Okay, and also you're ejected from the next meeting. So as we just saw and heard, He's done this, Austin. James Butts had no problem ejecting Miss Austin when she was abusive towards him in meetings. But then Councilwoman Dunlap lost the election, so Miss Austin joined the team of James Butts, who she had been calling Satan. She used the same loud, profane, and threatening tactics as before, but now against the critics of James Butts and his allies. Those allies including Alex Padilla, who Austin had called a dirty cop with a pervert brother. So where Butts used to eject Austin for her deranged behavior, now he supports it. Not throwing her out of meetings, but praising her in meetings. And instead of Miss Austin calling James Butts Satan, now, when people criticize Butts, Ethel Austin is caught on videotape comparing him to Jesus by name. We have to stop. It's most of you all messing around, driving stuff through the mirror, nails like they did Jesus. Nails like they did Jesus. Nails like they did Jesus. And instead of what Butts does with his critics, regularly interrupting them and impatiently watching the clock so he can immediately cut them off, with Austin now on his team, he sits quietly, giving her extra time to finish. And if she asks, giving her even more time, to the point where she and his other supporters recognize that they are being given special treatment, being given more rights than other residents. We don't need a police to be inside mayor patrolling when we don't have nobody to take care of the people. Okay, okay. Osario need to be out there helping the people on, on, on the blocks and stuff like that. Like the trash cans. Now here we trying to do it. Now you wait, well hold up, you gotta give me a minute now. You gotta give well, me no, a minute. Miss Austin, I Please. don't have to give you a minute, but I'd be glad Please. to I'd be glad to give you Please. a minute. Please, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. And almost mocking the rights of the other residents, his critics. James Butts gave Austin significant extra time, even when it appeared she had nothing left to say. 
Oh, you ain't never lied. What was it? I guess I did it. I guess I did it, man. I don't need it after all. James but shamelessly violated free speech, cutting people off who criticized him, but giving extra time to his shills when they were kissing up to him. The mayor, he has a good heart. He was here crying when I was crying. I mean, the man is trying all he can, and he... Could I have an extra minute, Mayor Council? Yes, you can. He's trying all he can to try to get us out of this, this whole... Now, James Butts giving Miss Austin extra time to speak, even when she didn't need it, just because she supports him in council meetings, is a clear violation of the other residents' civil rights. Everyone should get equal time to speak in meetings. However, you can't even imagine the degree to which James Butts will violate people's civil rights. Just because Miss Austin was James Butts' shill, Butts not only let her speak when her time was over, but he let her speak even when the time for all public comments was over. For instance, you recall that in 2013, the L.A. County D.A. found James Butts guilty of repeatedly violating state law and civil rights in city council meetings. And needless to say, when that fact was brought up in city council meetings, James Butts was looking for someone to defend him. However, no one stepped up to the podium. Not even Ethel Austin. You close for the comment. So with no one stepping to the podium, James Butts closed public comments and opened council comments, starting with Alex Padilla, who Butts gave an extra minute to speak, but who still didn't try to defend Butts from the damaging information that the DA found that he had violated the law and civil rights. So Butts got tired of waiting for a volunteer to defend him and decided to draft Ethel Austin, who he knew would defend him. Thank you so very much. Okay. Now before we go forward, Miss Austin, you look like you were getting ready to stand. Did you, did you want to speak with the permission of counsel? I opened public comment to that. She, go ahead, Miss Austin. Thank you. James Butts completely changed the order of the meeting for his own benefit. And it didn't take Miss Austin long to do exactly what Butts put her up there to do. It's time to stop, guys. If they're the DA wants the mayor, they know what to do. They'll come in and handcuff him. DA don't play. If they want the mayor just like they got Rizzo, they know what to do with. So, you know, just to keep coming up here to tell the people and the taxpayers, we don't want to know that. All we care about is this city moving. And Austin continued to praise and defend Butts and the council, past her three-minute time limit, with Butts's blessing. And why we just badger this man in this council? We got two new members that should not be badgered like we doing. I was wrong when I did. I realized and I started reading and watching things in this city. Padilla the first really moving in his district. And I live in his district. We have never had this in our district like Padilla is doing. And don't worry about the clock. That's the chairman. She keeps talking, attacking the Constitution. You have to put a stop. A it's, First Amendment. It, no, it, it, that's too much. Time awesome. oh, I'm sorry. But Austin keeps speaking, eventually speaking for a full four minutes, with James Butts obviously never really trying to stop her. So by now it should be obvious that when it comes to how long a speaker gets to speak in meetings, or even if a speaker gets to speak in meetings, James Butts blatantly, unethically, and sometimes illegally abuses his power as city council chairman. And when it's time to speak about matters specifically on the meeting agenda, James Butts regularly lets his supporters talk about issues that are not on the agenda. And he threatens to eject residents that point this out. Um, I want to say something about Inglewood today. Uh, well, then you're talking about payment. Well, let's say about payment of the bills. For us, Inglewood today, now, what I call a bad newspaper is Morningside Chronicle. That's the worst paper could have ever floated in this city. There's no payment to Inglewood today. Morningside Mr. Mr. Chronicle. Hold on one second. First if you of do all, that again, you'll have to leave. I mean it. And the most important perk Austin got by joining Team Butts was Butts lying to the public to erase her years of profane, abusive, and bigoted behavior. 
And Lord knows, Ethel Austin does not agree with me on everything. But, but her heart is pure. I don't want no rookie in my mother. Because usually this is what she does. And if she fucks my hair up, I'm going to have to fuck up. And I don't agree with her position. She hasn't always agreed with mine, but her heart is pure. You and that little stupid motherfucker <laughs> need to throw that motherfucker in the trash and quit fucking with that woman and get you a real man. And that's why we recognize her, because her heart is pure. An old damn fool. <laughs> her heart may be pure, but pure what? Now, if you're wondering what Miss Austin's views are on race relations, she's boldly told Caucasian people attending council meetings that white people shouldn't have anything to say about what goes on in Inglewood. And as we hear next, she is very comfortable stereotyping the voting habits of entire racial and ethnic groups. No Mexicans voting, and there ain't no blacks gonna vote for me. You know why? So as you can see, Miss Austin says a lot of things as if she knows a lot of inside information, like who voted or didn't vote for who in an election. So some of you might be thinking, okay, Austin is loud. She's certainly not a consistent or loyal person. I mean, she goes from fervently campaigning for Dunlap in an election to accusing her of election fraud after she loses. And she goes from calling James Butt Satan and telling everyone he raped his own daughter to blasphemously comparing him to Jesus. And even though she's constantly telling everyone how God-fearing she is, she curses like a truck driver and is apparently so proud of this fact that she shamelessly advertises her profanity on her own webpage. And no one can disagree that Ethel Austin has repeatedly made threatening comments and demonstrated dangerous and possibly mentally unstable behaviors. But besides all that, you still might be asking yourself, was Miss Austin honest in city council meetings? Well, Miss Austin was an active supporter of Judy Dunlap. But after she joined James Butt's team, Miss Austin, who literally stood shoulder to shoulder with Councilwoman Dunlap on election day, told a whole different story about who won the election and how, and now said that she never even supported Dunlap. But did he won fairly and squarely? I must say he did. He really did. We already knew how many votes it took to beat Judy Dunlap. You had to get 990 votes to beat her. She had 983 locked, a thousand votes. And I'm going to be honest about that. He won it. He did. You know why? Because all the blacks that didn't go to vote, the brown went to vote. Again, Ethel Austin was an active and vocal Dunlap supporter to the very end of the election day in 2013. But when Dunlap lost and Austin joined James Butt's team, the backstabbing Austin not only tried to pretend like she never supported Dunlap, but she actually told the public that she had, as she put it, busted Dunlap for not actually living in her council district. Judy Dunlap did not live here. I busted her in 2004. Now, a council member not living in their district is a federal crime. So Austin's claim that she knew Dunlap was committing that crime implicates Austin in two or three ways. She supported a candidate that she knew was committing a crime. She kept that crime a secret during the election. And when James Buss was accused of not living in Inglewood in that same meeting we just saw, Austin told everyone that it didn't matter where James Butts lived. So what way he live? If the man want to live outside on the on curb, that's your business. But yet it's a big deal because the man live with his brother or whatever or well. So what? And this blatantly hypocritical contradiction that Dunlap was breaking the law, but James Butts wasn't when they were allegedly doing the exact same thing, proves that the truth was no guideline when Ethel Austin was defending James Butts or his allies. And even when Ethel Austin says she's going to tell the truth, she doesn't. I want to say it straight and tell the truth. The truth shall set you free. Um, you were accused, the mayor was accused of uh, letting me use profanity in the meetings. That's not true. Oh, damn fool. That's not true. Oh, damn fool. That's not true. Oh, damn fool. 
so the question is, was Miss Austin honest in what she said in city council meetings? So the answer is no. And if you're wondering if Miss Austin's vile, aggressive persona was just an act, or if she was truly dangerous, all I can tell you is that out of the longtime Inglewood residents who were regulars at council meetings, many, if not most, just took for granted that Miss Austin probably had some sort of mental illness and that she could become violent. And it was because of that belief that most residents pitied her and didn't ridicule her in meetings for her lies, her nonsensical ramblings, her two-faced backstabbing, and even her threats. Actually, regarding the question of whether Miss Austin really posed an actual threat to anyone's safety, there is something else worth noting. And that is that Miss Austin herself posted on her own website a video documenting that an Inglewood VFW Lodge, an organization of soldiers, felt so threatened that they had to take out a restraining order on her. And so you will be getting a restraining order, as you say. We are. And what would be your reason for getting a restraining order? So if you get, if you get opportunity again, read the letters in which I gave you, and that will clearly state why we're getting a restraining order. And why we banned you. This is the kind of woman that James Butts let be as threatening as she wanted to be in city council meetings, as long as she was doing it for him. As I mentioned, many residents just assumed that Ms. Austin might have some mental illness, so they would rarely respond to her lies, attacks, or even threats, partly for fear that she might lose control of herself. But she got so bad, with the mayor's blessing, that someone had to say something, no matter what the risk. But hey, maybe all those Inglewood residents and all those war veterans were wrong. Maybe Miss Austin can control her anger. Let's see. Willie Brown, Ethel Austin, and Stuart Bailey stand at this podium and yell and curse and imply or actually threaten me with violent or illegal acts. Butts never tells the public that any of them are threats to public safety. Look at the hypocrisy between how James Buss acts when Austin interrupts someone, as we just saw, and when Austin is interrupted by someone. But now look at us with this hey, man. Ma'am, ma'am, if you want to talk, please go out in the hallway. It's not right for you to interrupt people, all right? Go ahead, Miss Austin. If Miss Austin was a critic of James Butts, the sergeant of arms would be removing her from the meeting right now. But because Miss Austin was James Butt's favorite attack dog, she's allowed to stay. Imagine how you would feel if you went to a city council meeting and everyone knew that if you said something that the mayor didn't like, you could not only be ejected, but that you would have to deal with his supporters yelling at you, verbally and physically threatening you, and being allowed to stay in the meeting after they did so. And Jane Butts allows Ethel Austin to stand here and yell at people in the audience and use profanity and use bigoted slurs to attack not only me, but Butts and other critics. No, I think the vets knew exactly what they were doing. And so you will be getting a restraining order, as you say. But even though Miss Austin repeatedly disrupted the meeting, James Butts did not eject her. Instead, she came right back to speak, and by doing so, she proved not only her emotional instability, but her ignorance. Mr. Tester, you want to rise out of me, but it ain't gonna work. See, you don't match ignorancy with ignorance. Ignorancy. Next, there's the issue of money. I got something to say. In an August 25, 2015 meeting, a resident pointed out that Ethel Austin and James Butts' other shills were only defending James Butts in meetings because they were either getting some sort of positions or payments from the city council to do so. So, to try to cover up this fact, Ethel Austin got up and tried to make a joke out of it. I got something to say. When y'all start paying me, Ignorancy. Anybody gonna give me a check around here? I need a check. Ignorancy. I need to get paid. Ignorancy. Well, since she asked, 
In the months leading up to the announcement that she was leaving town, Ethel Austin was suddenly and regularly on the city's list of check recipients. All of a sudden, if you look on the city's warrant register or the list of checks being issued, you'll see Ethel Austin's name with a check for May $283. Ethel Austin's name for a check in June $200. And Ethel Austin's name for a check in July for $346. Now, none of the checks said pay off to Ethel Austin for being the mayor's flunky. That would be illegal. However, Miss Austin suddenly starting to get checks from the city for things that happened in three straight months ending right as she was getting ready to leave the city? That's just very suspicious. And when the council was specifically asked about this check for damages and losses, they refused to respond. Now, as we will prove later in this documentary, the city council had posted the video of the July 14, 2015 meeting where James Butts and the council were specifically asked about that payment to Austin and where they refused to answer that question. However, as you can see, that video has very conveniently been removed from the public's access. And as we'll see later, that video might have been taken down to hide it because James Butts and the council were later sued for trying to hide the fact that they were improperly using city funds to pay off people like Ethel Austin. Now, as we'll see later, according to the city's budget and accounting manager at the time, Miss Austin was able to live in a house actually owned by the city of Inglewood because she was on the Section 8 housing program. And so if she would have filed a claim against the city demanding reimbursement for fixing her floors in a house owned by the city, or maybe to reimburse her for any damages and losses she suffered that she claimed the city owed her, that claim would have been evaluated by the city attorney, just like these on the meeting agenda. And nine times out of ten, the city attorney denies these type of claims. But as far as I could see, there was never any recommendation in any meeting agenda to either pay or deny Miss Austin's claims. They were just quietly paid. And these stories in the Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times might give an insight into why that happened. They describe a lawsuit against Mayor Butts and others by the city's accounting and budget manager at the time Miss Austin's claims were paid. The lawsuit describes many financial irregularities by the city, but it specifically states that Mayor James Butts pressured city administrators to give special treatment to Miss Austin, including giving her money to vacation in Las Vegas. And according to not me, but Inglewood's own accounting and budget manager at the time, James Butts pressured city administrators to give Miss Austin all these special privileges just to try to keep Austin from criticizing him in council meetings. Maybe that's why the council didn't want to explain what this payment to Austin was for and why the meeting video showing that the council refused to answer that question was removed from the internet. Before we go to public comment, uh, uh, Mr. Falco and Mr. Dean uh, prepared something for one of our residents that I don't think is going to be with us a whole lot longer. So when Miss Ethel Austin was criticizing James Butts, Butts would criticize her and eject her from meetings. But after she joined his team, he allowed her to stay in the city council meetings so she could be loud, abusive, profane, and threatening towards his critics to intimidate them into silence. And when she announces she's leaving the city, he honors her at a meeting, giving her a plaque, and she coincidentally gets hundreds of dollars of going away money from the city. And that's how James Butts gets people to support him in meetings. He gives them special privileges and favors, gives them tickets to events, invitations to parties, awards, plaques, positions with the city, and checks. And again, according to Inglewood's budget and accounting manager at the time, James Butts pressured city staff to pay off people he wanted to support him. And he makes it crystal clear to everyone that if you don't support him, he will violate meeting rules, the law, and your civil rights, and help his possibly mentally unstable shills yell at, threaten, and assault you in and out of meetings. And that is an unethical practice that will eventually end up with his supporters hurting someone.